I studied social psychology. My first ever internship uh, was as a comedy writer. I have been a TV presenter, radio host, and just finished a documentary about fraud in online advertising and the role played by companies like Google and Facebook. My first ever job was at a technology company. I am co-founder of two technology companies. I sit on the board of directors of three technology companies, and I have invested in 12 technology companies. My first ever venture was a French pastry shop in the center of Athens. And today I'm the corner of two restaurants, one of them featured in the Michelin's Guide, and a pastry shop. And today I want to speak to you about Rocky. Rocky as Rocky Balboa. For the younger generation in the room, everything I'm going to say, just take the same thing and think about Kill Bill. For the very young ones, think about Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> Good. All right, so what happens in the Rocky movies is that the main character, played by Sylvester Stallone, He's going on with his life, and at some point comes the need to participate in a boxing match for which he is totally unfit. Meaning, if that boxing match was to happen at the beginning of the movie, Rocky will get destroyed, which will not make for a great movie. But something happens, something quite important. Rocky undergoes training. A major transformation process by which he goes from unfit for a boxing game to fit for a boxing game, which he, spoiler alert, is eventually going to win, and that's going to make for a great movie. And so, we see a great edited clip of Rocky undergoing that transformation. We see him running, doing squats, push-ups, shadow boxing, and all kinds of other things that boxers do. And that major part of the movie, which is really important, takes an entire three minutes, less than 5% of the entire movie. Remember, it's quite central to the old thing, right? Why is that? Why only three minutes? By the way, that's a process that usually takes 10 to 12 weeks for a professional boxer to get ready for a match. The reason why we only see three minutes of that very important process is because it is deadly boring. It's really, really boring. There is nothing to see. It's the same thing again and again. Have you ever watched someone running? There's nothing to see. The legs are going, the arms are going, that's it. Nothing. But that's when it actually happens. It's not only boring. Now, if we get into Rocky's shoes, it's actually hard. It requires him to have discipline, to be resilient, and to go through that very, very, very slow, incremental process that is 
a transformation process, in that case training. A process by which we acquire new skill, we learn a new craft, we develop new talent. No. So it's boring. We're good. Let's focus a little bit on the running part. So very iconic in these video clips is the part where we see Rocky. It's usually very early in the morning. It's very cold. You understand it from his breath and the way he's dressed. And he's running across different settings in the city. Now, for Rocky to be out that early in the morning, he had to wake up very early. So Rocky was, I guess not with his gloves, but he was sleeping in his nice hot bed, enjoying some, any dreams he might have, and the alarm clock goes on and he needs to get out of that nice warm environment and get out in the cold and start running. So much easier to just stay in bed. We've all done it. Now, for Rocky to wake up that early, he probably had to go to bed pretty early the previous day. No watching a late game, no binging a series on Netflix. Rocky went to bed. And if he had dinner with his friend, they probably all enjoyed some kind of juicy burger, a pizza, with some fresh beer. What did Rocky have? He probably had a salad. If he's lucky, pasta with no sauce, and some sparkling water, maybe a slice of lemon for the taste. The point I'm trying to make here is that for Rocky to stick to that boring routine, he also has to undergo a series of little sacrifices again and again and again. And now, let's get to the dinner table with his friends. The guy on the left just ordered a burger. Two choices, the burger or the salad, the burger or the salad. Think about it. If you take the burger, that's instant pleasure. It's nice. You get kind of an immediate gratification, right? You feel good. And what's worst is that there doesn't seem to be immediate consequence, any consequence to that kind of bad choice in Rocky's uh, case, right? It's not because you just had one burger that something's going to happen. You'll still run tomorrow. Right. The thing with transformation, whether it's in one direction or the other, is that no single isolated event matters. You need to zoom out, and the sum of all of these little decis decisions and sacrifices, that's what takes you somewhere. So, if again and again you go for the burger, mathematically, at some point, you're going to put some weight. Pretty tough. And there is the last one that's even worse. That process cannot be hacked. Yeah, we all have, we all love to have, you know, our little tricks to kind of trick the process. Not in that case. Rocky cannot go running for 48 hours and just say, I'm done with training for the entire month. He'll get to the hospital. No. If transformation is such a difficult and painful process. How do we still do it? How come some of us still undergo that painful process? 
spoiler alert again, I do not have the universal answer. I can only speak to, for myself. And the first thing I can tell you is, I don't think I was born with drive. I don't think so. But somehow, a mix between my origins, which are all over the place, and the way life has unfolded for me, as a kid, I never got to spend more than two years in the same place, ever. Which kind of forced me to always be on the lookout, always having to do the extra mile to find friends, to get familiar with my surrounding. I never had the chance to, you know, meet someone and say, hey, I know your cousin. No such thing. Oh, a teacher who had my mom when she was young. No chance. She was in another country. And so that kind of forced me to always go and kind of fight for these little things that basically, you know, make your life enjoyable. Nothing was ever given. And I think I have a second thing that is quite helpful. I have a trait that I share with the likes of Justin Timberlake and Katy Perry. It's not the talent, nor the look. What I have in common with these people is a condition called OCPD. That's not a bad word. It goes for obsessive, compulsive, personality, disorder, a condition by which we have a pathological need for a schedule, a routine, very clear processes. We need things to be perfect. Attention to detail is very important for us. All these traits, if you think about it, are quite helpful in the process of a boring, slowly incremental routine that you need to undergo when you're taking on a transformation process. Now, to be honest, I do think we all have at least that first element, the drive in ourselves. It's just about finding the things that will trigger it finding what really matters to us. And that will transform into some kind of higher force that will allow us to take on that boring, hard routine that is needed to undergo a transformation process. And the last thing, I do think that we all need to give ourselves some slack every now and then, and as I did at the very beginning of this talk, zoom out a little bit and kind of enjoy all the things we've achieved so far and understand that it's worth it. Thank you. <laughs>